Hello, American Lit One. Um, it's been a while since I've put a video up, especially a new video for um, our semester. But I just wanted to touch base since, as you've noticed, our midterm weeks feel a little bit different than our week to week rhythm that we've gotten into thus far. So um, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes. I'm going to share my screen, kind of look over um, things to be aware of and um, be conscientious of for the next couple of weeks. And we will go from there. Um, I hope that you're having a good semester so far. It's been um, wonderful reading your writing and your responses to the readings and um, videos that we've watched so far. So hopefully you're feeling um, comfortable with the pace of the class. And, and again, this mid-semester shift um, that is partially because it's mid-semester, partially because it's fall break this week, which if you are a fully online student, that might not mean much in terms of campus being closed for a couple of days. Um, but I wanted to kind of honor that mid-semester bit of a break. But you're also working on an essay, your first kind of major essay for the course. So giving you more time for that instead of the kind of increasingly longer reflections you were doing each week. So let me share my screen. Okay, and I have the student view of the class. So hopefully this is what you see as well. Of course, you can um, make this look how you want. I will, incur I will be pointing to the top module, the course details and resources, where there are a number of resources and basic writing resources as well as you embark upon this first formal essay. So I'll be coming back up there. Um, but then, yeah, you can collapse all of the weeks so the so your course isn't quite so long and busy, but we're here in week seven through eight. So this is midterm week. Uh, midterm grades will be due, um, just as a quick announcement, midterm grades are due on Tuesday, October 19th. So clearly that's the day before your midterm essay assignment is due. So your midterm grades that are posted online, which are really helpful as um, kind of a guidepost for you in the middle of the semester, uh, but they don't go on your permanent record or your transcript or affect financial aid. So just keep in mind that if your midterm grade in the class is a grade that you're really excited about or a grade that you're really worried about, it will turn around very quickly um, or could turn around very quickly because of that big essay assignment that's due the next day. So just keep that in mind. Um, so this week, um, this is the assignment. I'm asking you to watch a film uh, this week. So it's called The New World by Terrence Malick. I've linked to it. Um, you'll need your library credentials to log in. So if you've ever logged into the library system, you know that you need your student ID. Um, I think you add EC at the end of it and then a password. And then you can pass through to all of the amazing resources at the library. But this link should, um, if you pull it up in Canvas, it might say something funky. Always click here, click on the actual title, and it will take you to the actual page. So I'm asking you to read, or I'm sorry, to watch this film. It's two hours and 15 minutes long. So um, pace yourself, um, give yourself time. And this description kind of goes into what the film depicts. Um, it's a historical drama, um, starts in 1607. And we see this kind of um, depiction of the new world. Um, I, I won't kind of read this out loud to you. I, I, it speaks for itself. It's a really beautiful film. Um, Terrence Malick is an incredible director. Um, so please watch this. Jot down notes, things that stand out to you. Um, and then after you watch it or before, it's up to you. I have a link to a film review. Again, Canvas gives this weird, looks like it's a broken link, but it's not. So click on it. Um, and either before, during, or after the film, read this review because it's a beautiful um, example of writing about film and more information about the film itself. So I really encourage you to read this as part of your assignment for this week as well. Um, so basically for this week, I'm asking you to, if you think about pacing yourself over the course of this um, now week and a half, 
um, for this week, watching a film and reading the film review. And then the open discussion, which, um, sorry for clicking around here, your discussion is due, um, why isn't she showing up? Forgive me. Um, <laughs> sorry, your open discussion, I think is due this Wednesday. I'm gonna have to tinker with that. Um, but basically what I ask you to do in this open discussion forum is to first share something that you enjoyed and or surprised you or has stayed with you from the first half of the semester. So everything from Native American oral literature and Christopher Columbus to the film, The New World. So we have covered a lot of ground over the last seven, eight weeks. So something that struck you, tell us about that. Um, and then respond to someone else's post. So please do that um, this week. And then what I'm, you'll hopefully be working on this entire time as well is the midterm essay assignment. So the last couple of weeks, um, I've asked you to kind of up your game um, for your weekly reflections and start doing a comparative analysis. We're still kind of in reflection mode, but I've been asking you to do it a bit more each week. So for this midterm essay, um, and again, give this the time and energy that it deserves. This is 150 points. This is, a, again, a, a large assignment. But what you are going to be doing is any two texts on your text list from the first half of the semester, so beginnings to 1820, and you'll be writing a comparative analysis. So you're making an argument or a claim or arriving at a thesis statement, and then you're using text to support your point. So this is very much kind of a choose your own adventure type of um, assignment. If you have taken comp two at ECC, it's quite likely that you've written an essay that feels like this. So wake up that part of your brain when you learned um, about writing a comparative literary analysis and use some of those tools and skills for this assignment. Um, so you'll see some of the parameters here. Um, it will be a full complete essay, MLA style with a works cited page and text citations. You must use at least two primary sources for this paper, two texts from your text list. Um, if you use further sources, I encourage you to use sources posted on Canvas. So you shouldn't have to do extensive or outside research for this essay. Um, so you will definitely be using your textbook and text from your textbook. If you want to supplement that, then again, there are lots of resources from throughout the semester. So hopefully that is pretty clear. Um, you can be creative and thoughtful and interested in the topic that you want to write about. Um, I'll point you again to the top of the class, these resources. You'll find a checklist for formatting MLA essays. Um, I also, in my Canvas email to you last week, I provided you with some um, links to resources as well. But this is a really nice, um, succinct handout, the online writing lab at Purdue. I'm just going to point you to some of the um, resources I recommend the most often in pretty much all of my classes. So this essay checklist, this handout, integrating quotations into your writing, um, you don't want to drop quotes. You absolutely want to use sources and use quoted material but you need to integrate those quotes into your writing, um, into your voice. Um, students often will just drop quotes, have them sit kind of on their own as their own sentences, and um, you don't want to, you want to avoid that. So this is a great succinct page and a half um, handout about avoiding standalone quotes or dropped quotes and really good examples and tools how to integrate quotes into your writing. Um, and then here also for this essay in particular, I have a comparative analysis handout. Um, again, just a two page handout that goes over best practices when you're making an argument looking at two texts. So keep in mind that this is, um, stop sharing, that this is an academic essay, a comparative um, critical analysis. This should not feel like a kind of robotic compare and contrast 
what you want to avoid is feeling like you're writing, okay, I'll do one paragraph about this, one paragraph about this, this is how they're similar, this is how they're different, the end. You really wanna move away from that kind of robotic structure. You may only focus on similarities um, within the texts that you're looking at to support this argument that you're making about what the texts mean, what they reveal. Um, that's absolutely fine. So kind of move away from those robotic structures that you may have practiced in the past and kind of delve in thinking deeply about analysis, making an argument and trying to prove it um, with the texts that you've read so far this semester. So hopefully that all is clear and makes sense. Um, I really look forward to reading them. I'm also absolutely happy and willing to look at drafts, to brainstorm with you, um, to bounce ideas back and forth. So at this juncture now, I'm posting this video on Monday, October 11th. Um, the essay is due in a week and a half. At this point, you should start to be thinking about um, narrowing down topics, gathering your sources, thinking about what information and quotes you want to use, and how you want to pull those things together. Um, and I will reiterate that if you've taken comp two, it is very likely that you wrote an essay like this. Um, so of course, this isn't going to be the same essay, obviously. But thinking about the skills and the structure and the main ideas behind developing an argument and supporting it with details from the text and showing how those texts sweep together. And they may be very different. They may be very similar. Um, it's up to you to be creative and thoughtful and dig deep. Um, so, and again, practice kind of the academic essay um, parameters, look at the assignment. Um, if you look at the assignment, you're able to check off like, yep, got it, got it, got it. That's a good thing. Um, things like avoiding first person point of view. Um, if you find yourself think, saying, I think, or in my opinion, just get that out of there because that weakens your argument. So use the resources. Um, this isn't an assignment that you wanna wait until the last minute. You will kick yourself. So don't do that. Um, be brainstorming and thinking about things now and let me know if you have any questions. Um, that is absolutely what I'm here for. So have a great day. Hopefully midterms are going well and um, we will talk soon.